Hello, everybody. Can you guys hear me fine? Oh, perfect. So welcome to Verify Your Software for Security Bugs. Um, my name is Simon Roses. I'm the, I'm the founder of Bullnex. It's a, it's a cybersecurity startup back in Spain, where, where I'm from. Actually, I have, because in Spain, actually, the, much, the weather is much better than here. Actually, so when I arrive <laughs> to New York, I'm a bit cold. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, you can find my blog. I used to work at Microsoft for many years doing AppSec, and then I left to start my, my own company. And um, I also won a uh, DARPA, Cyber Fast Track Award, to do security research. And actually, the, the project I'm going to present you today is about, is one of the pieces I did for this, with this uh, award from, from DARPA. And actually, that was, that was kind of cool. And I usually go to different conferences and speak as well, right? So enough about me. Let's move to something more interesting. I think I would, I would like to say thanks to, to the DARPA, because it was really, really cool that they give a, like a, um, a research uh, grant to a, to a four-inch. So that was, that was really easy. That was really easy going for, for work with them for a while, right? when I was working in this, in this research. So I would like to thank the DARPA, of course, much for, for managing the, the, the program and the fine folk from Bit System that they were, those people were the ones uh, managing all the projects in the DARPA Cyber Fast Track. So that was a really nice experience. Too bad, too bad they, they finished the program because I have many ideas, they didn't need funding, so but bad luck. Okay, so the, the, the objective for this talk, we're going to talk about security development in the software, right? Software security development, and we will focus on verification phase. We will talk about verification technologies, what the current state, and then we will, we will see how we can assess the, the security posture of software, of any software, actually. So the agenda for, for this talk is going to be secure development life cycle or frameworks, no? how to develop secure software, all the, the different phases, but we will focus on the, on the verification phase. Basic Sweeper, that's the name of the, of the tool we have, we have developed, um, uh, mostly myself. And we will go into some case studies, and hopefully we will do a demo. And my video recording skills, they were not that good, so we will do it live, so we will see how that goes. And then we will, we will draw some conclusions about this this talk, right? Okay, let's move to, to the software devel development verification, right? So here, if we, if we take a look here, we can see some uh, definitions by, by the Microsoft SDL, Security Development Lifecycle. I used to do that a lot of stuff in the SDL when I was in Microsoft. So here we can see that they basically, basically is, uh, is what we do that we validate, verificate everything that has done before on the, on the previous phases. Uh, so the, here we can see the definition. You can read it by yourself. And then we have another, uh, the software assurance maturing model, another uh, secure uh, development framework you can use. Uh, it's it's uh, the definition for the verification, right? It's, uh, it's like to, to check and test artifacts produced through the software development, right? To, 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 check, to check what has been done before, right? If things have been done right and securely. So here we check those. Usually, usually in, in, in the verification, we, we talk a, a lot about here in, the, in, in all the different in security development frameworks. In the verification, we talk, uh, people usually talk about code reviews, which th those are more in the development phase, uh, tree modeling in the design phase, and in the verification or, or testing phase, we usually talk about fuzzing. And people say, yeah, I do the verification because I do fuzzing. Fuzzing is just one of the things you have to do. There are more things you can do in, those, in the verification phase that usually people don't do. So we will go into more details on, on that. And here we can see that for the open SAM, they, in the, they have the verification phase, and the, here they, they suppose you have to do those security tasks in your, in, the, in your development, right? Like design reviews, security testing, usually fuzzing, and code reviews. Something similar is the Microsoft SDL. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the, with the Microsoft SDL, and this is how Microsoft develops uh, uh, the products, the security into, into the products, right? So here we have all the different phases, all the different security tasks uh, we have to, we have to do in, in, our, in our software, and then we have also verification. Here you can see like dynamic uh, fast testing, uh, verifying verifying the frame modeling, attack surface. Actually, here it doesn't say, but if you go to the Microsoft site and download the, the SDL documentation, it's a quite long document. They will talk about verification tools, and Microsoft has released some of verification tools you can also use. Uh, here in this phase, for example. 
So it's quite nice to, to use this kind of technologies here besides fuzzing. At the end, well, because why, why we are doing this? Because at the end we want to save money. I mean, secure development costs increase the cost of, of software. I mean, we have, to, we have to be honest about it. I mean, we are putting security into each uh, phase of the development. It's going to cost us. But at the end, we are, we are investing. It's not, it's not a cost, actually. It's an investment. So we have to think in those terms. It's an investment. If, of course, the cost it will increase to produce our software because we have to do security, which we are adding more tasks. But at the end, it will save money, hopefully. And that's, that's the idea. And here we can have, this is a, a graph that I think it was IBM. I think uh, many years came up with this research. Um, they, they, they did a survey uh, asking for, for a lot of uh, development houses uh, the cost of fixing. And here we have like, a, a, in this graph, we can see the cost of fixing bugs. For example, in, in the design phase, we are quite early. We haven't write any code. So it should be easy to fix any, any issues, right? And here we can do a field modeling to identify risk and how we can mitigate those, right? Then we are moving to the development phase. Now we are starting to write, to write code. We can find bugs doing code reviews, for example. And then we have still have uh, time to fix those and the cost should be quite low for us, uh, for a developer house, right? Now in the verification phase, and here is where I'm, I will focus more on the rest of the talk. Now we can, there's a cost here. I mean, fixing bugs here, uh, it, could be some, it, could, it could be some cost because now maybe, maybe we have to make some changes to the code, so we have to go back, so there can be some delays. So at least, but, uh, but still here, at least, the, even there is a cost, at least we, we, we want to be here and, and fix things here at least, right? Because if, if we are releasing a, a product, a software um, with bugs, the cost increments exponentially, right? They, it's quite high. I mean, for example, I mean, I cannot tell the figure in Microsoft, but for example, for Microsoft to fix a bug, when you see every, every second Tuesday the, all the security vulnerabilities, that's a lot of money for Microsoft to fix that. And, and, and for many companies, it's the same. I mean, it's quite a lot, uh, it's quite expensive to fix the bug. The, you have to fix the bug, test the bug, and that everything works fine. You have to distribute your new update to your users. So it's quite costly. So we, we, have to, we want to try to avoid that through the other different phases, right? So here we have some uh, verification tools. Uh, we have a Microsoft Binscope. It's a really nice uh, verification tool you can use. It's free. You can just go to the link and download it. Uh, it will do some, some Windows checks for your binary. For example, for the Microsoft SDL, the framework we have just saw, for example, in the verification phase, it's mandatory to use this, uh, this tool to have a clean pass of your, or your product, right? And uh, the Binscope is free, so you can just go and download it. Uh, Rex Binary Assurance is a really nice tool that they create in the UK, a security company in the UK. Uh, well, they don't exist anymore, I think. Uh, they go buy it. Uh, they released this tool. It's a commercial tool, but actually it's quite cheap, uh, so anyone can afford it, and it's really it has really some, some really nice checks. I mean, I haven't used it, used it myself, because it's commercial, but uh, actually the, from the documentation you can read, it's, it's quite, quite nice. And then uh, the Rata Security Group, uh, well, company came up with a tool a few years ago uh, called Looking Gas. It's another verification tool, but so far I have, been, I have not been able to find uh, where I can download this tool. They have a lot of posts talking about it, uh, but I have been not able to download it. So, so the only one I've been playing around is Binscope, well, and then other tools as well. But here you can see uh, there are some tools you can already use. Okay, so this is the, the, the interface of, for Binscope. I guess many of, I suppose many of you are familiar with this tool. If not, I recommend that you guys download it and, and test it. And here it's quite easy. You just uh, run the tool. You can set the, which files you want to, bin you bi binary files you want to access. You can specify all the different checks. I think it has around 10, 10, 12, uh, 10 or 15 checks by default. So you can just uh, specify which checks. And by default, I think it does pretty much all the checks it has, around 15. And then it, 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 will, it will scan your, your binaries and it will tell you in a, in a simple way there you can see the uh, pass on or pass, red, green, easy to follow. If your binary has those defenses or what is the security posture of that, of that binary. I mean, it doesn't, uh, for example, for the Microsoft tool, uh, Binscope is, is mostly focused 
on on your own software because for you usually when you do the de develop your own software you have more more information like the symbols and all that stuff that so if you don't have the symbols and all that information that you have when you develop your own software you, in, in a in a third in a third party vendor software you don't have usually that kind of information you can still try to do some checks but it will it, many of the checks will be missed because it cannot get all the information it needs to do the to do the to do the analysis so binscope is really nice for your own software but it's not that great for external uh, software unless you have the symbols and, and information is required okay so the current state of the verification tools is like the first thing is platform specific as i show you there was uh, like windows windows tools right so we have binscope looking glass and, and binary assurance they are okay yeah they, they, they are nice tools but they are windows only tools uh, they can only they can only run in windows they can only scan windows binaries then for linux we have something similar we can use uh, one of the most popular tools is a, is a simple script called uh, check check and it, it comes in different uh, linux distribution or you can download it it's, it's free and then there are some people who are write like cu custom scripts to do something similar in the in the in the linux world to do lot, like simple binary binary analysis on, on on, on uh, binary Linux, no? So, so again, it's the same here. For the Linux, it's the same. You know, they only work in Linux, they can only access Linux uh, binaries. There's also a, a limited set of checks. I think, for example, of these tools, um, both in Windows and Linux, they focus on, on defenses. For example, what kind of security defenses is inside the binary? If you are have, if your binary, your, your, this binary has been compil compiled with all these defenses, or, or not, or it's lacking those defenses. So they're they're focused on that. But actually, there are much more stuff we can we can look into in, into a binary. For example, which compiler was used, uh, which version of the compiler was used to to compile this this the binaries, right? If we're using external libraries, maybe maybe our software is secure, or at least we are trying to 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 do the most we can. But we are using for sure we are not using we are not writing everything from scratch we are using third party libraries maybe those libraries are insecure so we can we, so actually many of these by verification tools does, doesn't address third party components that's why was today and today we have to even in i think in the OWASP top 10 they talk about even third party components so there are many issues there um, malware of course we, uh, i mean we have antivirus and, that, that, and other technologies sure but it's also but it's also in the verification phase we have to make sure our, our for example our product doesn't have malware there have been some uh, re uh, reported cases that a company has built software and shipped the product to customers and there was a malware inside inside the, the product so so we can add some malware checks into our verification as well to make sure that our product doesn't ship with malware to the to the customer and so and there are many more checks but we will, we will talk about it so there is a lot of things we can add to our verification tool, the uh, current verification tools, uh, well, free verification tool at least, are not doing it. So you have to just combine different tools to, to, to do something similar. Uh, here we're trying to put all together. And another important thing is not easy to extend. I mean, uh, you, cannot write, you cannot write your own checks. Uh, so, I mean, for me, that's why that is quite important because I like to add my own, my own stuff to look to look what, what I need to look in, in, in a binary. So all these tools, uh, well, in the Linux, because they are scripts, you can, you can change them. But in the Windows, the Windows tools, you cannot add your own checks to the tool. So you have to just wait all the time until the vendor release, release a new, new checks or new version with the tool. For example, I think Binscope, the, the last version they have released is two years old. Something like, I think, yeah, I think it's two years old. And in two years, things in the security space has changed. For sure, right? So, so none of these tools are, are, are allow you to, to add your checks. So here we can see some issues and limitation of current, uh, current current tools. So here we have a, we are talking about uh, binary intelligence. There is so much information we can get from a, from a, from a binary, right? It doesn't matter which which OS or which platform. There is a lot of information we can get. For example, we have file information, uh, the size. We can get hashes, timestamp, what type of file. So there's a lot of things we can get in the file information. Then we have the security mitigation. Those are here, those are Windows defenses, but we, in Linux it's something similar. So we can get, we can get an idea if, the, if this binary, for example, has been built with this kind of defenses or not. 
uh, compiler, which compiler was used to, go, to build this, this bi uh, binary, and uh, hopefully we, we can also identify the version. Because are, are they using modern compilers or is it old compiler? That's quite interesting for us from a security standpoint of view, right? Uh, vulnerabilities, of course. If the binary is using uh, unsafe API, is weak cryptography, much more things. So there's a, lo a lot of information uh, we can gather from a, from a binary, and that's what we are trying to get here in the, in the verification phase. I see a lot of people taking pictures, no worry. I, I will upload the presentation to, to the site in a few days when I'm back in Spain. So just wait a couple of days, please. Um, um, but if you want to take pictures, go ahead. Eh? Uh, so let's talk about bin sequencer. That's the tool I've been working for the last several months with the with the DARPA. The, that was, I mean, in the project we did for for DARPA, there was more stuff. Actually, it was a project to do to improve the security software. How, how we can improve security software? And this uh, bin sequencer is just one of the pieces we did for this project. We have done other other things, and hopefully we will we will ta uh, release that and talk about it hopefully next year. So bin sequencer. Uh, basic sweeper is, is our, our response, I guess, to, to uh, binary security verification, right? So but, but basically this tool uh, allows us to, to perform a security verification on, of, of any binary. So, we can, we, so actually we, we would like to evaluate the security posture of this binary. And at, the, at the end, when we, when we were developing this tool, the idea was for security, uh, for development teams. Like, for example, you, uh, you are developing your product across the different phases of the security development uh, framework. And we were thinking that let's, let's come up with a verification tool that the developers can use at the verification phase to, to verify the state of their own binary, right? Um, so, yeah, so developers can use it to verify their, their product before, before shipping it. If, if it's comp compiled with all the defenses, um, try to avoid different type of vulnerabilities and stuff like that, right? But also when we were uh, thinking about this tool, when we were writing and doing testing, we also think, oh, okay, this this something interesting. Actually, we can just we can also use can also be used by IT or security teams, IT staff or security teams in in, in any enterprise to assess the vendor the software they are using in the enterprise. That's kind of cool because now we can, we can, you can take any any software you are using in your in your company and, and get an idea of the security posture of the of the product. We don't need any source code; we just taking the binaries, so there's no there's no problem there. We don't need the source code, so that's kind of that's kind of cool. So now we can get an idea of the software we have in our, our in our in our system, and we will see a couple of examples while we're doing that. And of course, right now the the Binsec Reaper is a cross-platform tool. It works on Windows and Linux and, and, and Mac, and actually you can you can uh, run it pretty much on, on any platform, and you can uh, assess Windows binaries and uh, Linux Mac uh, binaries. And the funny thing, uh, the interesting thing is, for example, you can be on a, on a Windows system and you can scan Windows binaries, of course, but you can also scan the Linux and Mac binaries on the Windows, or you can be in the Linux machine and scanning Windows binary. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't care which platform, which binary. It will get a, it will get access. So what, some of the features for this tool is uh, 100 uh, is open source in Python. We, we love Python. Um, we, did, we, did, we, we went with Python because we, we do a lot of Python development in, 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 in the company. Uh, of, co of course, the, the, the performance is nice. It's not the best. I mean, for sure, if we use like more native technologies in C, we can get much more performance, that's for sure. But the performance is, is good enough for our needs. And, and actually, using Python, we, we get some benefits. It's easy for us to run in any platform. Uh, it has some really nice nice stuff using Python. So we, we, we just went with Python. Um, so it's going to be op open source, entire framework. So it's, uh, we have tried to make it very easy to use. It's a nice, at the moment, it's a nice uh, interface I, I will show you. To, uh, we have tried to, to, to make the tool quite in, 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 uh, intuitive and it, from a, more for a developer, auditor type. So you will, you will see how that works. Of course, uh, I was saying that this cross platform, so it works on Windows and Linux. In, in Mac, it works, but we have to make some, some tweaks 
not to the Bin 6 Super itself, but to some of the libraries, uh, because the, the, the requirements, the installation requirements is easy, but there are some particular uh, libraries we need, and some of those libraries, they're not working that well in, in, in Mac. So we have to figure out a way to, 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 to be able to run smoothly in, in the Mac OS, but, for, but you can uh, assess by, uh, Mac binaries. But for example, you can just copy those to a Linux or Windows machine and get uh, audit. But right now, we have to figure out a couple of ways to, to run it on, on the Mac OS. That's quite nice. So actually, it's, uh, you can configure different settings for, for your needs. Uh, of, of, of course, the, the plugins. So everything, uh, all the checks in the tool are, are like an, a plugin, plugin system. So it, it's very easy for you to write your own plugins and add new checks to the tool. So you don't have to wait for us. We come up with a new version and uh, with new tests. You can do it yourself. So that's quite convenient. And of course, reporting. That's a, we have we have add some uh, basic reporting uh, capabilities. Right now, you can generate like HTML, uh, XML, and CVS if you want to do some parsing uh, with, the, with the results, right? So those are some of the features of the tool, and I think they are, they are quite nice for our for a open source project. And here is the, the, the tool, right? Here we have running the Binsec Trooper in a, in, a, in, a, in a Linux box. And actually, we can see, I don't know if you guys can see it from, from the back. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. But here, for example, this is the main interface of the of the Bing Search Trooper, right? And here you can see in files we we have we have a scan uh, 285 binaries in a, from a directory uh, in a Linux in a Linux box. And this is a I think it was a backtrack uh, distro, this, this and in backtrack you know you have like Windows binaries as well. So we point to um, so a directory, they were like uh, Linux binaries and Windows uh, binaries, and it, it assessed all of them. So here we can identify like a couple of uh, like several binaries with risk, high risk, medium risk, and uh, well, in this case, there's no any medium risk, and some and some of the binaries for both even Windows and and Linux were were okay, right? So it's quite easy to see that good pass fail, and that's that, that's the idea. Downstairs, we can see, like, we call that the file information, and here we can see the, the file name with the path, the size, the file type, the file type, and here it will, it will tell you what kind of binary it is. Uh, it will also give you an, a nice icon. So here we can see it's a, it's a Windows binary. Uh, if it's Linux, it will show you a Linux icon. So we have, the, like, different icons for different type of binary. So in a quick view, you can, you can see what kind of binary you have. This, this, is, this is it. Here we have we, you get, we get different hashes for for the file, right? And actually, we are using also those hashes for more for malware analysis and other stuff. And then we we run into the into the results. And here, for example, we can see uh, the file, and here are the checks, right? And here we can see that this binary so far looks uh, it was in the in, a, in okay, it doesn't have anything. You have a question or? Yeah. No, actually, the checks we are going to do, this, uh, everything is stored in a Mongo database, and I was going to talk about it. Right now, where we're, where we're thinking is we have, we, there are different uh, online sites. You can submit hashes, and they will tell you. That's, that's the thing we are going to do. I mean, right now, I mean, we are working on a few things, but it's not like we are not going to build a malware analysis engine into, into this, because that's, uh, that's out of the scope. But, but we are going to, to, with those hashes, submit those to different, I mean, those will be plugins. So you can you can you can specify you, if you want to do that or not. So, but we are going to do use uh, total virus and few other sites so you can submit hashes, for example. And that's the thing we are going to do. So here we can see that all the in this case, this uh, Windows binary looks looks okay. We have detected that it's using a, it's protected with debt. It has also some stars cookies, and it also the the check will count how many functions are protected by 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 start start cookies here in, in this binary, and you, can, you will get dif different type of information. And here you can see red, good, uh, I mean red, uh, bad, uh, green, uh, good, and it's quite easy to follow for, for anyone. You don't have to be like a security expert or rock star to understand this, and that's, that's the idea. We are, I mean, some of the things we have to have some knowledge. We don't expect anyone just go and using the tool. I mean, you, you can use it. I mean, anyone can use it, 
but the results, for example, sometimes you can get uh, like red because the, the binary is missing a, a defense, but maybe that's, there is a reason for that. So you have to, so you can use, anyone can use the tool, but at least to, get, to really understand the results, we expect that people have some certain knowledge of, of what is expecting the, of the binary, right? So here we can see that it's quite easy, easy to use the, the tool, right? And here in the, in the, from the same scan, um, we, here we, we have taken a, a Linux, Linux binary. Um, here we get, we get the, the penguin there. You can see that's a Linux, Linux binary. So we, ha we have identified a Linux binary, so the Linux checks has been applied to this binary. The tool will do all these kind of things for you. It will identify the binary, and then it will apply the correct checks to, to that binary. And here we can get, we can see all the information. We can see there are several uh, checks read, mi missing. We didn't find any fortified source, uh, stack canaries, uh, railroad. Maybe we don't need that. So that's up to, to us to decide if the binary needs that or not. If it needs, we can, now we know, so we can maybe do something about it or not. But we have to at least have some understanding what, what we're expecting. But at least here it gives us an, a, a view of the, of the state of the binary. For example, in this case, this is this binary is, a, is a, actually is a, is a security tool in the in the Spike framework, passing framework. So chances are we don't care about if this binary has those mitigation defenses or not. But for other binaries, maybe we do. It's just to give, to give you an, an idea, right? So here we have some of the checks uh, we do for for Windows at the moment. We have many ideas, and we will I will talk about, uh, about all the checks in a little bit. So some of the checks we do at, at the moment, um, the other space layout randomization, no? ASLR. So we will check if the binary has been, has been compiled with that, that fact or not. And here we, we, we can see that you have to compile, when you compile your, your, your project in Windows, you have to specify that, that fact, uh, dynamic base. And here we have also stack cookies. Uh, the, the, one of the interesting things of this, of this uh, plugin, it will also count how many functions are protected are protected in the, in your in your in your in the binary? How many functions are protected with with the stack cookies? And that's quite interesting to see how many functions, for example, there is an, in a binary. How many functions are protected uh, with this? I mean, the compiler is the one deciding which defenses are applied to the binary. Uh, hot patching. We also detect if, if the binary has been prepared for for hot patching. Uh, that's interesting we, we to see that. Uh, we also check for depth, if the binary has been enabled for, with, with depth at a compiling time or in building. It's the same for, for say, theft, uh, the structural exception handling, if the binary has been built with those. Many times uh, you, know, you don't need that. It depends, you, depends your, your binary. Uh, and then we are using a lot other, other few more checks, like the Adobe malware classifier. It's quite an interesting check. I think there was, it's a script that Adobe Release, I think it was last year, um, and it's based on the incident response team they have in-house, uh, performing like they have been assessing like a lot of uh, binaries uh, for for incident response, and they came up with a script to the, to try to perform some some analysis on a binary to see if this potential uh, malware behavior or something like that. So we just copy that script and uh, make some changes and add it to the Bing scripter. So it, it will try to figure out if this binary has some beha malware behavior suspicious or not, but it's, quite, it's, it's a nice check. And then another one we we we, we kind of like a lot is the Visual Studio compiler fingerprint. Right now, for example, what we are using is we are able to tell you if the if Windows binary was compiled with Visual Studio and which version. Right now, we can identify Visual Studio 8, 2010, and 2012. And that's quite interesting for, for a security time for you. For example, uh, are you using like an old version? We have started seeing uh, software, well-known software, and I will show you a couple of examples, that they, they have like all components with all compilers, and, and it's, it's interesting for, from, from a security point of view, right? And we can right now, and also we are building more, more um, compilers, uh, fingerprinting, like uh, in Windows and also in, in Linux, to identify, to identify those, right? It's quite interesting. Then we have like Linux check or, or current Linux check. So in total right now we have around 50, no, yeah, 30, 50 checks uh, in, the, in, the, in the version we are going to publish uh, uh, soon. We have the fortified source 
but basically, in the Linux check, it will, it will, it will tell you the binary has been, the, when it was built, compiled, uh, if, if the developer did apply those, those uh, security facts into, into the binary. For example, in Visual Studio, the one in, in Windows, uh, Visual Studio, for example, is quite common by default, last, last versions, they will uh, add many of those uh, defenses by default. But for example, in GCC, GCC uh, doesn't do uh, nothing. It, it doesn't add any of the security defenses by default. You have developers have to do that. And when we have been scanning the uh, major Linux distributions, uh, we have started doing that. We can see that many of the binaries are not compiling with those security defenses. I mean, GCC, GCC has them, but people are not using them. So here we can see that different uh, defenses like uh, fortified source, uh, NX, um, the PI railroad. For example, railroad is another interesting because you can have a partial railroad and full railroad. We have seen that it's very common for many binary in, in Linux to have partial, partial railroad. And that actually if you just has partial, it's, it's not good enough. Actually, it can be easily bypassed. You need full railroad. And we see that many developers use partial but they are not using full railroad. I don't know why, but that's, that's why I'm that's why, why I'm seeing uh, analyzing different uh, Linux distributions, right? And if you just use partial, it's not good enough. And then we also do the stack canary and all that stuff. So those are the different checks, and we have many more in, in our list to do on, on the window and the Linux side uh, and Mac as well, right? For the, for checks we we can do, right? And here we. Uh, Guess you can, okay. Hopefully you guys can, can read that for back in the end. And this is one of the scripts. This is like the hello world of the, of the script. I mean, of course, you have to show a hello world. Because you have always to do that, right? So I just want to see you how easy it is to write a, 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 a test, a plugin to, into the Bing scripter, right? So here we have just a, a simple Python. If you are a Python uh, developer or like Python, you will love this tool. Everything is in Python. Um, so here we can see that we just register the plugin. So we just put the name of the plugin uh, with kind of uh, OS we want to access, like Windows, Linux. Uh, we can, uh, what kind of architecture? Right now we can only do, we are only focus on, on Intel binaries, but we are thinking also to do some IRM and mobile stuff. I will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and type of code, native, native manage. We also plan to add some .NET checks and a few things, right, in the, in the, in quite soon. So, and then we, in the active plugin uh, function there, uh, it's just where your code goes there. For example, this is quite like a ex ex skeleton uh, file, so you can just take this file and add, and add your own checks, and that's it, you are re re ready to go. So it's quite easy to, to add your own checks into the tool, just following this, this, this file. And here we have a, a real example, right? This is the check for Windows for checking the ISL. Uh, so here we can see if you go, if you look into the active plugin, uh, active, activate plugin uh, uh, function, you can see that we are getting a, um, the get file parser. Actually, this Stripper will do the, the work for you. It will tell you this is a Windows binary or a Linux binary, and it gives you the correct uh, cache to, hand, to handle that file. So here, because I, I told, I, I want to has, assess Windows, it detected it was a Windows binary, so I get that Windows, uh, Windows binary, and can, I can perform all kind of uh, tests, uh, parsing the headers or, or the data of the file. Non, uh, I have to say that any of the files, this is like more static analysis tool, so it doesn't perform, uh, we don't execute any of the binaries. We don't ever, ever execute any, 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 any of the files, right? So we are limited in that sense, but we are more secure because we don't execute anything. So here we just now we have uh, access to the binary, and we just do we can do whatever we want. And here we are just reading the the headers, looking for this this criteria. If we, we if, if we find this, that means that this binary has been compil compiled with uh, ISL uh, enabled. So qu quite easy, quite easy to do your own, your own checks, right? And then we submit the results back to the engine. And here we, there's a bit, a bit more complex uh, example from the Linux side. And here we have the Linux fortified source. Uh, and here we check, we check if the binary, for example, we, when you enable this, this kind of protection in your binary, it will, uh, it will check some for a couple of, well, certain insecure uh, functions, and it will be replaced um, 
in the binary for, uh, with a more secure, secure version. And that's something that the compiler does for, does for you. The, develop, the developers doesn't need a, any knowledge of that. Uh, so here we are looking for that if the, if the binary has been compiled with this and looking for the, those uh, secure uh, functions. And it will, we will also count how many, how many requests has been in, in the binary. So that's quite nice, and you can see it's, it's not very hard to write to write uh, checks for, for the tool. And here we have the reporting. And when you generate for some web, we have here done a, a, a scan. Now you can just get, get generate. Here we have the HTML reporting, so it will generate a report, just one single page with all your with all the files. Some, some of the scanning. So I think it's quite, quite convenient to get an idea. And here you can see uh, red, green, tail, path. So actually it's quite easy to give that to, to developers or anyone in the team to understand red is bad, so we have to do something about it. And that, that's the idea, right? Because we, we are trying to give you like, um, we are trying to, the idea was to really simplify things so we can give this kind of information to anyone. They don't have to be like a security expert to understand there's something something bad. If we, if we, we, yeah, we, can, we can add a lot of information and there and do a lot of things, but people don't care. We, 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 we want to simplify things. Okay, so what are the features of the, of the tool? I mean, some, of course we want to do more, more plugins. For Windows, Linux, we have a list of ideas and friends, friends are telling us more ideas to add. We, we are thinking also to add some mobile checks, so we'll be able to, to, to perform some uh, Android and iPhone uh, bin uh, binary uh, analysis as well. Uh, malware, of course, uh, we are thinking also if, if we are thinking ways how we can detect uh, backdoors in, in, in the software, and there's usually, from time to time, you can see backdoors in, in people publish cases that software has a, like a backdoor. backdoor. It will be interesting to see, but that would require some time to figure out way, really w nice ways to, to do that, right? Because right now is the, the 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 analysis we do is quite quite static, and for that we we have to come we have to think about more ways to to do the compilation and and disassemble, and that will take a lot of time to to figure out that way. But we are thinking backdoor will be nice to in the future to be able to do that. Compiler for sure that's something we can do more or less easy. To, the, to identify the, the compilers and hopefully the version use it. Uh, and, use, and actually, and a check we are going to release quite soon, it will also tell you the, which packer was used in the binary. So we can get a lot of uh, information from the, from the binary with all these different checks, right? And those are things that we are working at the moment on these uh, different checks. Of course, we are also thinking to, to add some point like uh, a metrics panel, so we can, for example, you start scanning uh, uh, files and files and files, you can get that how many files are missing this, or how many files are using this compiler, so we can, we can try to get some, some metrics, and, but that will take some time until we are able to really know, to, to really uh, add some metrics, but we are, we are going there, right? And of course, uh, one thing we, we, are, we are interesting is uh, to do a this on, on the same product on different version. We want to see the security evolution of the, of the software. Because one of the projects, and I will show you a couple of samples, we are starting to use this, this tool to start making a catalog of well-known software, and uh, what's the security posture of, of well-known software. So for us to be able to, then, to identify the same product, a different version, and maybe different platforms, we can, we can take a look at what's the uh, security. It's the same people developing in the Windows, Linux. It's different teams. What kind of defenses are you using for Windows, Linux? So we would like to, we, we are, we would like to see that information. So we are thinking to add metrics and differentiate and this into the into this into the tool, so we are able to do that. Uh, right now, the tool should be able uh, is not available yet. It should be in a, uh, hopefully by the end of next week. We should upload it to our to our site, and you should be able to to, to download it and start using it. If you cannot wait, just let me know, and I will be happy to send you a, an advance. But you can just wait a week or two at the most. Because the thing we have to wait is we, we, we have to write, we have tried to write a nice, a nice uh, documentation. Uh, but what happened is the, a couple of the requirements libraries we are using, um, of, the, of the Python libraries we are using, the guys, the developers, has made some real serious changes from, uh, I think it was in October. And actually now we have to change the, we have to change the, the documentation or to, to change the tool because now we have to make changes to the libraries 
so we have to make some changes to the documentation to be able to, so you people can just install it quite easily. Now we have to do some hackering to, to install because those, because some uh, libraries, Python libraries change and that's affecting our, our, our code. Um, so but it should be, hopefully by the end of the uh, next week, I hope it's, it's, it's there, right? So let me go into case study. So what, what are we doing with this? This is some time for action, right? So case study one is we are using uh, how you can use this tool to verify your own software. I mean, I guess if I guess people here, I assume there will be some developers uh, uh, using. So now you can use this kind of t uh, tool to assess your own software. Uh, case, uh, case study two, we will we will take like we will pretend to be an enterprise and we are the IT team or security team, uh, and we, we can try to evaluate the software we have running in our enterprise. And then we have also take the, the latest version of the different browsers and make a security comparison quite quickly. Okay, so verify your own software, right? So we, have, we are developing our own product. Um, so here we can use this, this tool. For example, if I'm the security people in my, in my team, uh, I'm doing the, we are doing the, all the different uh, security development phases, I can use this tool to verify that the developers at the time has been following Following in the, the security development practices, right? Or, for example, if we are using like uh, external components, we can also assess those those components in our, in our product, right? So here we want to validate our our, our, our product, right? So things we can we can check for: um, are we compiling our, our product with a really modern compiler? Are are our external libraries that we are using compiled with a with a modern compiler or not? Um, uh, are we enable the, the security defenses in the in the compiler for for Windows Linux? Um, hopefully, there's no malware included in, in in our in our product. We don't want that, but that ha that has happened a few times. And of course, we can also look for external uh, components and what's the security uh, because the security of external components in our product will affect us, right? So here we can get a, from. From our product, from our product, we can get an idea of what's the current state or security posture. Uh, for example, we can test. Yeah, we, we, are we using Visual Studio? Which version? Uh, this is a Windows-only check, of course. For example, in the Microsoft SDL, if you are familiar with Microsoft SDL, they, they they tell you you have to move. For example, now it's Visual Studio 2012, so you have to keep moving when they release a new version of the Visual Studio. You have to move. To the to the new ones, right? So they are push they are pushing the development teams to follow the to move to the new version, right? Uh, so that's something we want to interest uh, to see. And we will see uh, an, uh, an example of that uh, quite soon, quite interesting. For example, we, we can also check uh, if the Windows or the Linux we have a product in Windows Linux. What are the defenses that have been enabled or not in 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 our product, right? And we can also audit all the files. At the end, what we what we what we uh, what we want to gain from this is like is our product is p passing or failing, right? Are, are we are we showing like we have a nice security posture? At least we are trying to do our best to secure our product or, or not. Another thing we have we have started doing that is is, is a catalog. We are starting to getting to install uh, getting all the software we can get. Um, uh, so, for example, here is the same is the same case, right? For example, you have a lot of software in your in your enterprise. You have from from all these vendors, right? Here we have some of the top vendors like right? Microsoft, Apple, Oracle, IBM. I'm sure many of you have any of those any of these vendors products in in your house. But you really you here you really know the security of those products. No, you don't actually. Uh, there is a trust, but trust trust is okay. But it's always nice if we can verify ourselves and get some some conclusion there, right? So here we have all the different um, software, for an example now. And this is quite nice because we can identify the, the weak spots of software in our, in our enterprise and maybe we can do something about it. Maybe, yeah, sure, if I, for example, if I found a security program in a in a IBM or Microsoft, something like that, uh, well, those maybe Microsoft will, will respond, will do something about it, it will take a few months, but other vendors will, I mean, independent who the customer is, will don't care. Uh, so it can take time, but this way we can now we can identify what's the weak spots in our in our enterprise, and maybe we can do something about it. Maybe we can use Emet to help to protect to protect those binaries. How much time I? I'm taking too much. I, I don't think I have time for the demo or anything, but 
I guess I guess I am speaking too much. Sorry about that. So, one, for example, one of the things we have we have done is like we are starting to to the, to install and, and, and we have like we have building a small virtual farm to start develop to start installing all the software we can and ta start getting ideas. For example, here we have set some common well-known software: VLC, Skype, iTunes, and Dropbox. And those are the last version of each of each uh, software. Uh, and then we are starting to get to get uh, something uh, the results. Here we can see that some 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 DLLs uh, or binaries uh, have some issues. Maybe there's no, there's, there's not an issue. Maybe there's an, that, that is lacking a defense, for example, on purpose. I don't know. We are, we are taking a look on that. And hopefully when we have more developed the metrics, we can really get an idea of, of all this software, right? Right now to analyze all this is, is a bit hard because we are starting, we are, we are making a catalog. But so we are working on the metrics part to allow us to, to start analyzing all this uh, software. But it's kind of cool, uh, for, and that will be a nice talk for, uh, for I guess, next year when we have more of this, more, more developed, to see what's the state of software out there in the market, right? Because here is, this is the last version of the, of the software you can download at the moment, right? And then we have, the, we did the same. Okay, let's go for the browsers, because uh, attackers love, love browsers, right? So let's get an idea. For example, so we downloaded the common, the top major browsers, uh, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer 10, Opera, and Safari. And we say, okay, let's take a look. We only did it for Windows, but what's the security of this software, right? So browsers are really complex, and attackers love it. So here we have the results. Uh, here we can see the number of files that we assess for, for each uh, browser. Uh, this is the main uh, executable in, the, in that browser, like com.x. Uh, the compiler use, use, the funny thing for the compiler, the only one we are not able to identify is Microsoft. That was, that's quite interesting. We have to dig a little bit more of why we were not able to do that. So I have to look it into more, a bit more it. But that's the only one. For example, another interesting thing is Safari. Last version, you can, the, the, the Safari browser, if you go to Apple and download it right now, is, is using Visual Studio 2008. I guess not, Apple doesn't have money, I guess, to, to upgrade to a, to a Visual Studio, more updated Visual Studio version. I don't know. And for example, actually you can see, you can see for example on the different browsers in overall, they are quite nice. In, term, in terms of security, at least they are trying to, to put all the defenses, defenses they can, of, of course they have vulnerabilities, but it's, it's hard to, to, to secure products really. But at least they are trying to build the software with all the defenses they can. For example, only, only Internet Explorer and Safari are missing depth. Maybe there's a good reason for that. Uh, honestly, I don't know. But, th but you can see the rest of the browsers uh, have all the defenses uh, and using try to use the latest com uh, com a modern compiler at least. So we can see that at least browsers are trying to get uh, to try to do a nice thing in terms of security. But you're starting to do this with other type of software like I showed you before, and the results are quite interesting. So the conclusions. Uh, so as I have said, the binaries contains a lot of information. We can get so much info. Uh, of, a, of a binary, so, so, and we can use it, right? Um, we want to improve uh, for that, for, for if, if, if we develop software in-house, what we want to do is develop the, improve the security posture. I mean, security improves the quality of the product, and we can charge for it, and actually there's a branding thing there. I mean, if we are doing security, we are improving the security of our product, we can show that. We can show to our customers that, uh, that we are doing something about it. So here we can show proof of that. And of course, we can also do from an IT point of view, we can assess, assess um, the security of the, our, our enterprise, what we have running in our systems, right? Uh, I guess a call to arms. Uh, we would like to hear from you. Actually, uh, when we release that, you can play. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure it will have a lot of bugs. This is beta. I mean, it's working, but still, honestly, it's, quite, it's, it's better still the software. Uh, we, we follow the Google model. E everything is better forever, so we will do, we will do the same. Uh, so here we can see, uh, we, we want to hear your thoughts. I mean, how we can improve the software? What checks do you need? Uh, metrics, we are inter really interesting to see what metrics you would like to see in this kind of start When we start getting all, because everything is stored in a Mongo database, so we'll be able to scan, hopefully soon we are working to be able to scan the entire enterprise, so there will be a lot of information from binaries, we'll, and we'll be able to do metrics on that. That will be quite interesting. When we are not there yet, we are working on that. And that will be quite cool to identify the weak spots in our, in our enterprise, for example. 
Well, this is on, if you want to, you're a developer and you want to learn more about these defenses, uh, those are the links you, you want to read. And I think I'm done. I think I have only one minute, so I didn't have enough time to do the demo. But if you guys want to see, I'll be here all day. Feel free to come by and, and hopefully by, by the end of the next week, I hope, it will be up and you can try it yourself. That's probably the best way, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys have any questions. I have time or not. No, no time. Okay, they're kicking me out. And thanks a lot.